Good evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Inget Zoom series talk. Today, our guest is Defne Akınca Midas. Defne Hocam has been a teacher of English for about 30 years. I know it's so hard to believe looking at her. She has experience in teaching students at elementary school, at higher education, as well as adults. She has taught general English, academic English, and English skill, uh, skills for proficiency exams. She's currently an instructor at the Department of Basic English at the Middle East Technical University. Her interests include teaching writing, language assessment, and motivation. She is also a board member of our association, INGET. And in fact, she is one of the most important members of our board. It's always a pleasure to have her as a guest speaker and as a colleague to work with. This evening, the title of her talk is Creative Writing Tasks. Just fancy stuff or the real deal for our learners. Thank you, dear Defna Hocam, for being with us and uh, welcome again. The screen is all yours. Thank you, Aida Nojam. I feel so good about myself. Uh, I was a little tired, you see, and now I feel I'm full of energy, lots of motivation. <laughs> All right, let's start with um, the title. I'm going to focus on creative writing tasks for ELT. Okay, so if you think I'm going to teach you how to write a poem, you're terribly mistaken because <laughs> I can't do it myself. So, but I can make use of it. Um, I can try to make use of it uh, in the classroom. Um, but I would like you to think about at the same time as we're going through the sample tasks and whether they are creative, whether they are writing, whether they're for students, um, ELT, for student practice for ELT students. We're going to think about some, you know, we're going to have some questions. Is it just fancy for the class? Or is it, does it really do what it's supposed to be doing? So let's go on. Uh-huh. Ah, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to answer a few questions that you may see here. Um, you might have further questions. Please keep them towards the end. Uh, my English is not very good, though. Please keep them to the end. Towards the end, we're going to get, get back to them. But in the middle, I might just stop you know, uh, and say, do you have any questions? Uh, being a teacher, I do that, you know, and you can ask your questions if you like. So let's go on. Before we go on, I'm going to uh, discuss a few of the preconceptions or things, ideas, feelings that uh, teachers may have. Um, I certainly did for a long time or from time to time, long time ago, Anyway, about creative writing. One, a lot of our, the teachers, especially in my situation, and I don't blame them, but still, we're teaching paragraphs, F essays, quite structured stuff, you know, semi-academic, kind of academic in our school. So creative writing is out of the question, it's totally irrelevant. But this is wrong. There has have been um, research on it. It is wrong. It actually helps students put ideas together. It motivates them, it helps them gain um, confidence. And in fact, I'm going to move on to the second one. They may say, in fact, it's detrimental to student writing development in the way we want it. But in fact, no, if you hide away the features of creative writing, they won't know the difference between them. So sometimes we come across some expressions like, I wanna go, the guy told me in an academic essay, they don't know it belongs somewhere else. It may belong in creative writing, it may not. That's a different question, we'll talk about that. But still, they should know if it's spoken language, if it's informal writing, if it's 
this or that, you know, we need a variety of pieces of writing uh, tasks in the classroom so that they know the differences. We shouldn't be hiding them. It's not gonna work like that. My students level is too high or too low to do stuff like that. You know, creative writing, fancy stuff. That's not true. Advanced learners can do it and you can always challenge them. Level too low, there's you know, beginner's level. They can do it. I'll show you a little bit in, in a little while. We don't have enough time to play around such things. You know, it's, uh, we, have, we are busy. Well, if you have a lot of uh, pieces of photocopies or these days online materials practicing grammar, subject, verb agreement, then that means you have actually enough time to do creative writing. Just throw the other stuff out. Creative writing is difficult for my students. This may be the case. It depends on how you uh, handle it. Sometimes it's not very easy. It's, you have to prepare a lesson. You have to be prepared because usually creative writing is kind of open-ended. There's not one single answer to it. So you have to craft it well in the beginning. Or each time you do something in the classroom, take notes, learn, and try it again. It could be difficult for us to implement it, fine, but there are ways of doing it. There are, uh, you, you should try, you should get, I don't know, some information from the others, from other teachers, attend webinars, <laughs> but try and try again. There's always a good way of doing it. Oh, I love this one. Oh, creative writing is not tested. It's not on the testing syllabus, so why waste time? Now, creative writing is not our, our end product. I'm going to talk in a minute, but you know, we're not. That's this is not the way to think about when you're teaching something. We teach a, a lot of things so in order to achieve something. Like um, people preparing for the uh, for the Olympics. Let's say you're running. You're preparing for the Olympics. You do lots of lots of other uh, physical exercises in order to prepare for it. This is just like that. There's a lot of ways to do it. And then in the end, uh, your skills in the tested skills, let's say, will improve as well. So it doesn't have to be particularly creative writing to be tested. So let's analyze the, the words that go uh, together. Creativity. Um, lots of beautiful words. I want you to look at um, a commonality between the two. Creativity, writing. Let me help you. The underlined words, not the, the yellow ones. I tricked you into looking at them. Process. Creativity, but th there are some other words that are pretty close, but when you mash them together, it's really nice. Creativity, a prolonged process. It takes some time, time. Involving periods of forming ideas. They have to formulate, come up with ideas. Explore possibilities. There may be some different ways of approaching it. Variety. And reflecting critically. You know, they have to think about it and be critical. What about writing? It's a complex process. Again, another process that requires the author to be aware of and combine, still the look, combination, forming ideas and combination, various components of language successfully, aware of language. So when you put these together, I think you, they're really similar, aren't they? I mean, one is a way to help the other. Writing can help creativity. Creativity can flourish in writing. So why not put them together? So what is creative writing? Harmer defined it as, and there's, there are so many different definitions. So let's not go into that. Let's have a look at it. And we're going to go back, go to samples. Creative writing is any writing that goes outside the bounds of, aha, uh -huh, formal, professional, journalistic, academic, or technical forms of literature, texts. So for the others, for these, the formal profession, there's a, there are certain boundaries. Okay, this is something we teach in our school, an academic kind of academic form of text. What about creative writing? Again, 
it can technically be considered any writing of original composition. So um, anything outside the formal stuff, but writing of original composition, it includes a variety of genres. I love the word genres. It sounds beautiful, makes you <laughs> look at the first time I heard it, I thought, whoa, the teacher knows so much. And I learned that my students do the same thing. I said genre and the teacher, the students thought, oh, you know so much teacher. <laughs> Let's look at some genres of creative writing. Genres, it could be fictional, non-fictional. So it could be real life or it could be anything outside of that fantasy world. Now have a look at these and write in the chat box if you will, if you like. The ones that are non-fictional, that could be non-fictional. Come to think of it, everything they could just be anything, but you know, there are non-fictional ones. Let me let me tell you, if you don't wanna, there's, uh, you're having fun there. That's why you can't write anything, okay. <laughs> so speeches, non-fictional usually, it depends, um, but still. Speeches can be non-fictional, yes, usually. And, and generally, diaries, journals tend to be non-fictional. Biographies tend to be non-fictional. All right. And journals tend to be non-fictional. All right. The others tend to be, you know, fantasy. Maybe they have some reality in it, but not so much. You can go wild with them. You can go realistically. You can do uh, whatever you want. Although I want us to remember, you know, these, these have uh, some structure too. Journal articles have structure. Novels have structure. Short stories, they have structure. It's not totally going wild, but still it's, you know, you can do stuff. You know, it's, there's more creativity in it. <laughs> it's a nice word. Another point to talk, to talk about is, are we teaching creative writing or is it creative writing as an end in itself or creating writing as a means to an end? Of course, the second one, right? In the ELT classroom, we're not trying to get them to write a successful um, poem um, with rhyming words and, and rhythm and stuff. You know, it's it's really hard. It's We're not professionals, are we? I mean, there could be. You could be a professional teacher of creative writing. In fact, you could be writer yourself, which is lovely, you know, wonderful. Uh, but we're not we're not trying to do that here. You know, I'm not in that. We're just talking about ways of getting students to to engage in writing creatively in order to uh, produce English and practice English more and maybe enjoy something extra. All right. So what is the role of creative writing? In simple terms, they can practice, improve language skills, the knowledge of language, grammar. The, the G word, the G word, but still grammar and, and vocabulary use and what and what not, you know, uh, other stuff. What is the other stuff? The perceptions, improved perceptions towards English itself, learning English, the process of learning English. Otherwise it's really boring, can get really tedious sometimes, you know, using English, particularly writing itself. They might start right, liking it. And reading, because we they read other stuff, you know, readership, appreciation of others' products, and in fact, self-expression, it gives them freedom. Let's see, one more, do I have more? All right, let's say this as well. I was looking for some criteria that makes a task, creative writing task, uh, but there was a lot of literature. I just put down a few common points, but to, we'll try our hands at a few of them. And then if you have any more, or if you want to take out any of these, we can do that. Okay, create our own mm, list of characteristics. So these tasks are suitable for any level. It depends on how you design them, how you choose them, how you choose to use them, but they are suitable at, for any level. They, are us they usually allow for variety and imagination. Every student can come up with a different product. 
and imagination is included. So they they uh, they can say things from uh, that they believe in, that they think, they can imagine. It they involve some sort of creation or recreation of texts. It doesn't have to be totally original. When we say imagination and original, please don't get. Uh, we're not expecting. Uh, you know, and great new novels and stuff like that. But, you know, very small changes can create something amazing, you know. May involve feelings, personalization, addition of the unreal, like fantasy world. Okay, and they can help enjoy the product simply, rather than simply spotting mistakes. Last week, Bilant Hoca killed me. The, the most important word, maybe he didn't intend that, but I cannot forget the time when he said, well, usually in our education, we read student stuff to spot mistakes, but not the rest of it to enjoy. And it's stuck, it's really stuck, you know, um, it shouldn't be like that. And that gave, it's a big lesson that I learned. It's, um, wow, I mean, the whole session was very influential, but I thought, Ah, oh, that teaches me. Well, in creative writing, we need to, you know, help the students enjoy each other's products as well. Well, I wonder if I'm going to be able to <laughs> um, hold up to, you know, uh, what I promise here. Let's see. A sample task. I'm going to go slowly, very simply. And in fact, you're going to say, oh, we know this. This is very simple. But let's see, we will try a little bit and then I'm going to show you how it progresses. We can't sit down and write and it would be wonderful. I would, I would enjoy to read the end products. That's what I like actually. I'd like to read the end product, but let's see. Um, now here's my instructions. Assuming that you are my students um, and your level is not very low, not very high, let's say intermediate. Let's say we've covered certain words and whatever. I've selected a word from there and I scrambled the letters and I added a few more letters. Now you can see some letters are double, N, N, T, T, because you can use as many as two of these. The others are single because you can use D just once, C just once, as you can see. So you can, on the right, you can see some vowel sounds, letters of the vowel sounds. Luckily, you have all of them, as you can see, right? It's an important point as a teacher. You have all of them. In English, there are some are more important than the others. And on the left-hand side, there's the consonants. Now, I'm going to ask you to create you can do this by grouping students. If you like, in this start individual and then pair them and group them. You can do that. I'll, I'm just going into the task. <laughs> Tony Ojam, you can't, I can't give you another vowel. You have to do with this one. Now, the instruction is create English language words with correct spelling. You can't use any more to uh, uh, any more of these. All right, so if, you, if a letter, if a word has two ends, you can use two, you can use one, but you can't use three. Um, create words, a uh, one letter word, two letter words, three letter words, four letter words. You can create as many as you like. It goes up and up to 14 letters. Believe me or not, there's a word there with 14 letters and it's, uh, now that's a word, that's another word. Paragraph cannot be made. There's, you can't say paragraph, I'm sorry. There are two, two A's, three A's there. I'm sorry, Hojam. There's only two A's. You need to uh, find words with maybe two A's. Tony Hojam, you, you're doing the right thing. You're creating, killing my creativity. That's wonderful. Yes, I am trying to <laughs> limit it. <laughs> Don't go too creative. Now, there are rules by the time, you know, you might be working. There is a word with 14 letters. Now, uh, of course, I'd be quiet as my students are working. I would just say, keep quiet. I would give some time. Uh, there, this could be, this could go on. It depends on the kind of students you have. Um, it could be 
two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, whatever. Grid, okay. Alpha, phonetic. Oh, yeah, good, good words. C, there is C. Autograph. Autograph. Grandchildren. Can you say that? Hmm. Possibly. Election. You can't say that. Tony Ojan. One we one one no no. <laughs> no. Aha, you are so good. I'm going to, I was going to warn the students about a few things before we go into this. One, no political allusions, please. Two, don't mention anything uh, that can make me, uh, no, not the contamination. There's no M here. Um, don't mention anything that can make us sad. As you see, uh, you cannot make the word earthquake, rubble. Um, but if you push, you can find things. You know, uh, somebody said dead, but that's not possible. There's only one D. But you can you can write death. Unfortunately, yes. All right, collapse, collapse. You can't say that. Can you? Double. There's no double L. Sorry, no. Careful, watch it, no. All right. I don't see anybody finding my word, radio senses. <laughs> oh, chat GPT, ah, there are cheaters here, wonderful, I love it, I love it. All right, now what I would do is to, you know, once they get to uh, some uh, frustration, uh, of course, I would collect the words like, oh, A, you find A is a word O, also, and is a word also the beautiful, the most common words, three letter word. And then, um, I don't know, do. Um, and then you, you go on to four letter words. Blah, 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 and then I would say, hey, let me give you a clue. It starts with a C and it ends with an S because it's plural. If you need another, I would wait a little bit more if it's group work. <laughs> 14 letters, Tony Ojam. <laughs> Instructions, counter proposal. <laughs> Wonderful. But no, one P, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> All right. The word is, I'm, it goes on with C and O and N. Con. And I must continue with a G. Oh, I must remind you, I told you so, but you know, you're going to leave out a few of the letters. Not all of the letters can be used. Conjugations. <laughs> that's a good one. Congratulations. Yes, conjugation. Whoa, that's good. But I have only one G. I made this so difficult. But if he if imagine uh we've covered this an hour ago, imagine that we did it yesterday. So I would say, I know Tony Ojam. Oh man. All right, so um, <laughs> feelings create to writing and feelings get together. Yes, all right. So, um, but I would give clues. I would ask for the word. And then I would go on to another point. This is one part of writing, isn't it? Letters, sounds, and and uh, words. And I, uh, catastrophe doesn't, does it? Ooh. It looks like it is possible. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you very much. This way you get a lot of congratulations from the students. Now, um, the next thing, you might go on, you might not. If you want to go on, if this was just a warm up and a revision of the word that you just taught. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm going to go on, Tony Ojam. There are so many others that we're going to uh, use uh, and do. The thing is, imagine you've created many, many words, and, are, and we wrote them on a on a tablet or on on a word on the on the blackboard or whatever. We're going back to face to face. Hopefully, we'll be doing that. What I would ask them to do, I've just done this. That I've just done this. I would say group the words according to a criterion. It depends on what, you know, you would look at the, the, the board, it could be grammatical groups, you know, some, some of them are content words, nouns, verbs, this is and that's, or they might want to, they might want to do in a different way. You might get them to group them 
and then ask them to choose a word from each, depending on how many groups they make up. But, you know, I can imagine 14 letters, you know, you would have many of them on the board. It's possible, since we have all the vowels and T um, and H and, and S and C are here, the typical words, you know, things you need. The only thing is I don't have the W, which makes life a little hard, but still um, choose a word from each and then ask them to write, use them in a dialogue or a conversation. Dialogue would be a, a two, which ends with congratulations. So you're directing, there's a limit structure to it, but there's a lot of freedom in it. But of course it depends on your students. They might need certain things here um, or an alternative, there should be an F there, but alternative, use the words in one sentence. You can ask them to choose five words, and ask them to re write one sentence, which might be long, but you know, depending on the group, if it's an intermediate upper, they should be able to do it with all the kind of ways to, uh, to combine them. Of course, they can use other words. All right. Now, what should we be careful about as teachers as we take we want to take this to our classrooms? Work on a familiar word. They should know the word congratulations. You can just open up the you know uh, the unit you covered and have a look and you know select something like that. I chose a long one so that they could come up with many other different words that they can. However, check for the vowels and consonants among the letters. They may not be able to come up with anything in English. Uh, certain sounds are used a lot. If you are an avid, I don't know, um, uh, solver of um, what's it called? Some you know, word kind of stuff. Uh, I, my vo vocabulary is gone. I'm focusing so much. I can't remember the other word I'm looking for. So um, it, it's, it would be a good idea to have the E, the H and the T because you can create so many words with these and certain words. Um, I'm not, Tony Ojam, yes. Um, the F word, the N word, it's a kind of a bias. It creates little kids use it. Um, <laughs> S word for ladies, I'm not gonna say, but kids can uh, see them in, in kids kind of stuff uh, and they may use them. You know, there's an adjective to it, there's a noun to it. Uh, so I'm not going to say you can use the chat GPT maybe. <laughs> so, but you should, they shouldn't be using them. And if they do so, find a way to penalize. It's not creative. It's pretty uncreative. What else can you think of? What should we warn the students about? Or what should we be warned of as teachers, as you want to take this to class and, and actually get them to use these? Anybody? If not, I'm going on to another one. All right, we may talk about this later on. I'm going to get back to these, you know. Oops. Sample two. This is a classic. I always love it. You go to class, depending um, on the student's level, you can change the opening. You have a sentence starter or a story starter. And you have to create the, uh, before you don't show them, of course, this, and um, you create the atmosphere, first of all. You say, you know, I have a sentence starter or whatever, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to dictate to you a sentence. I would like you to think about the meaning deeply, discuss it if you want, and then I want you to continue uh, the story. It's a story. And then read this with the right kind of um, the intonation. The child opened the forbidden drawer and and the students will be looking up to you and say, well, and I don't know, and you, you're going to continue. And so uh, they need to Think about, of course, there's, there's, this is just like a scene from a film, uh, a child, there's a child. They are going to decide if it's a girl or a boy. I haven't decided it for them. Open the forbidden drawer. Ooh, ooh there's a big story behind this. 
There must be something there. And what happened, I wonder? Now, what's going to happen is you can, you can, the individuals might be working on this or pairs. Uh, they continue, they can only write one sentence and stop there and pass their papers to the next person. They have to continue the previous students' continuation the way they continued in a, in a logical way. And on and so forth, this goes on until the whole class is visited. You can have the whole class, but if you have, a, I don't know, a, a class of 30 students, it would be a good idea to group them into kind of tens, 15, because it gets tedious from time to time. It's, yeah, they get boring. Sometimes they don't like the way it started out. It really gets difficult to uh, put it in the right way. Sometimes it, it's very, it works very nicely. So it's, you know, 10, a group of 10 is the optimum, I would say. What else are you going to do? Well, each group adds another clause, each person, a closer sentence to continue the story. You can add some color to this. After two, two students, you know, after passing it to uh, the third student, you can stop them and say, hey, you're going to continue, but you need to add a dog to the story. Okay, the way, whatever dog you like, at least one dog. And then they go on, and then maybe after two or three students, they say, hey, add a happy event. It could be a birthday, a surprise party. It's, wouldn't that hinder creativity? Um, are you talking about this? Adding ideas, Jacopo Hmm. In what way? Or trigger? I'm trying to, the, the thing that happens is, it, it starts wonderfully, the stories, and it dries down. They don't know what to say sometimes. I'm trying to tickle it. Uh, give give um, some direction to it um, with with one little idea they can do they can do it could be a toy dog I don't say what kind of dog it is a toy dog a small one a huge one any color um, I don't know it could be it could come in and out the story but they have to work at it yeah okay. Um, so it's a happy event or add them a new character. All right. Okay. Anyway, you may do it the next time you may add this. It's an alternative. And then when, when they finish after one or two rounds, it depends on how big the, the class is, how much um, they want to write. You can put the stories together, duplicate the stories and get them to all read and maybe edit and work on it. It's everybody. And you, can you imagine you have how many stories? So many of them. Um, you can do many things with them. You can have a look at them and find, try to find different endings. What happened in the end? What happened to the child? I'm really curious. What happened? What happened to the elements that we, I, we asked them to put there? It could have added so many things or maybe killed it. I don't know. Um, you can get the students to enact the stories. You can get the students to um, read the stories. You can make them, you can get them to tie the stories. You can get, you can do many things, but also there's readership as well. All right. Um, in addition to your notes in the chat box, I thought, what should be, what should we be careful about as teachers? Try to write one to see if a story can be created um, or to show how it is done to students. They may not understand what you're after, if it's the first time. Um, the students may need to use a dictionary to find words or conjugations of words, past tenses. It gets a lot of you know, past tenses. Um, the new words or required structures should be the topics that you've covered in class. Don't expect them to create. Creativity doesn't mean they're going to create something they don't know about. All right, the students should know the words or structures already. And you thought of maybe being careful about structuring it too much? That could, that's a good idea. But I'm also, I'm also trying to be careful about leaving it too free because then you don't know what, what they're going to go. 
And our main purpose is not to have a beautifully written story, uh, but we want them to be able to practice certain things, make it, put it into use, you know, that's what we are after mainly. Um, and get them to use their imagination, find some solutions, different solutions, and they will be reading the, each other's papers too. There's readership. All right. <laughs> oh, the chat box is on fire. All right, <laughs> let's go on. I have another idea, but this is a classic one. Another sentence starter with ifs. Um, you ask one student to start out with half the if sentence, the conditional. If you don't attend class today, it's a boring one, but still sorry. But even this can end up in, oh, in beautiful places. <laughs> Um, and the second student continues and tells the, the result. If you don't attend class today, you will blah, blah, blah. And the other student takes up the, the result, turns it into an if sentence, you know, and the conditional that that case happens, then this will happen and it goes around the class. Um, if the class is crowded, I'd recommend that you, again, you know, arrange the class to smaller groups because it it's going to dry out somewhere or it's going to repeat itself. It's then creativity doesn't mean it's endless. <laughs> and sometimes this, uh, a very dry topic can, you know, be beautifully, you know, can go on for a while, but sometimes a beautiful topic will not go anywhere. So um, we need to be careful about it. Um, they can continue, you can record their sounds, or if they write it, you can still put them uh, as sentences and find out what happens in the end. It, the end is always, you know, very, uh, interesting. They want to want to know what happens. So uh, the first and the last uh, parts, uh, you put them all together. You say, "Wow! If you don't attend class today, um, I don't know. Uh, birds will fly, kind of thing. You know, it's a, it's a totally irrelevant result will come out, and you might have a laugh. You can do the same thing with the uh, the third conditional." or mixed conditionals, but hey, let's try this one. I don't know if you will agree with me. Um, make sure that they know the structure very well because they're gonna have to turn it around, the grammar and the, and the meaning, and they will have to think about it. They have to have practiced it and they know what they're talking about. They will focus on the meaning, of course, but anyway, this may not work very well with if type two, the hypotheticals, it, when you turn it around, you just can't use it directly. Like if I were rich, I would buy a Ferrari is okay. But if I bought a Ferrari, do you always buy a Ferrari? I, I don't usually, but if I did, it doesn't work. But if I were to buy a Ferrari, it would work. But I think, you know, why push? Just use it the other way around, but get them to do this and, and uh, use it in a different way. You can get them to write a story to follow, follow you know, a, a, a dialogue where... This is the last sentence. Well, if I were rich, I would buy a Ferrari. This is the end, the final remark. How would you start out and come there? You know, uh, that would be better. I wouldn't push this. Um, it's always best to try. I tried it out, uh, you know, at home. I said, true, it's, it's going to put me into a lot of, a lot of trouble. A car is enough for me. <laughs> no, Ferrari, please. All right, let's go on. Now, I'm going to uh, share with you two types of dialogue, two tasks for dialogue writing. In this one, I chose this picture. You can choose many different pictures, but be careful about pictures. Um, I, this is not very clear because I want them to decide on it, or you can have alternatives, different alternatives of places, the context, where are they, how are they related, and who are they? a doc doctor and a nurse, a patient and a doctor. This is um, an airport, a pilot and a, a somebody, you know, you can have different contexts so that this picture works beautifully for that because they, there's, they're nobody. So you go, they're going to have to put faces and clothing and uniforms to them. Um, if they're not experienced in this, you can pre-prepare and distribute the contexts and as you can see, of course, there's another thing here. Somebody is talking, the other one's thinking. And this one's doing, you know, some kind of explanation or 
surprised, you know, there's some kind of exclamation going on. And this one say, ah, and you know, thinking. All right, first with your students, explore all the elements and then maybe distribute some context. Um, they can come up with them, but you have to give them some time to decide on that. What kind of context, who are talking? And then when you're sure everybody's got a proper thing, you can ask them to say, well, um, oh, let's see, uh, let me go back. I'll just tell, talk through and then we'll look at it. Um, tell them to write at least, you know, four turns. They should be talking and actually they're not talking. One of them is talking, the other one is thinking. So there should be, you know, um, some explanation. What is the person thinking? This one says a sentence. This one thinks about it, says in response, there's a thought here. This one says another thing. In response, there's another thought here. All right, so this one, this is not very easy, but even beginners can do it. Because if these people don't know each other, for example, this person would be saying, where have you been? And this one saying, I wonder who you are. Who is this person? Or, so, or let's say a beginners, uh, just say, my name is blah, blah. And I say, who? You can do you can do many things, you know, because this person's really confused or you know, don't know. It could be confused, it could be sorry, it could be just remembering something. Oh, I forgot about that kind of thing. But they don't say it yet. You can create many things out of this. All right. So they create them and they might even enact them. Um, it could be an airport, cafeteria, shop, hospital, people who know each other, people who don't know each other but they need to use spoken English here and thinking a little bit. So they should know a little bit, not a written academic English, they should know some spoken English. Um, there are different sets of contexts, of course, age appropriate, please, if it's for kids, you know, think about their own uh, uh, ways of, you know, their own worlds. These people may know or may not know each other. Of course, you're gonna warn them about, you know, um, not to use cuss words, don't not to use certain words, you know, and don't do this, don't do that, you know, no politics, please, thank you. Otherwise, our students would do it. The, the students, uh, 18 year olds, oh, you know, they can say many things, they can conjure up many ideas, so it's always nice not to have it. All right, let's move on. Now, this is, um, an idea for dialogues. Um, you can get them to write dialogues in many different ways, but this is using um, a short film is something I like very much. I'm sure you would as well. Uh, you do as well. And uh, short films can be found if, if there's no, if there's only music, for example, you can always use an ad, for example, there's no talk, but you, if, if you were to add a talk, what would it be? How would it add, how would, what would you add? to the ad advertisement or to the program. Now, um, I'm going to show you, uh, share with you a film with no sound. I need to stop sharing, I hope it does. And I have to prepare my video. You know, you shouldn't be, <laughs> you shouldn't hear it. Let me turn it off. Okay, I hope I can manage it. You shouldn't hear the sound. I want you to watch the film, you may know it, uh, or you may not. And I want you to think about who these people are, what are they doing? And then in the second time I, I, I get them to, to watch the film, I would say, okay, now work with your friends and get them to try to find what they're saying, write the dialogue. In fact, if it's a higher level, I would actually get them to do the voiceover. You're going to be prepared to do the voiceover. We've done this in an amphitheater a few times, and you should hear what the teachers came up with, and the students are very creative. I hope you like it too, and just imagine what could be done. All right, I'll first uh, play halfway through silently and then pull in sound so you can uh, enjoy it. It's a little long, that's why I want to do it that way. 
Let me play it. All right, I'm trying to replay with sound on. Excuse me, excuse me, sorry. Um, do you speak English? No, I don't, sorry. Um, um, my car's broken down and I wondered if you could tell me where to find a garage. Yeah, well, you know, that's that's wasted on me. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't speak English at all. Not a word, no. It's one of those things where I wish I paid more attention to school, but um, excuse me, you speak any English? English? No. Uh, I don't know. I can't understand. Hi, uh, my car's broken down and I need to find a garage. No, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that at all. All right, well, thanks. Uh, anyway, if you go down that way, about half a mile, there's a village. Um, there might be somebody there that speaks English. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Deutsch, nein. Sprichst du Deutsch? Deutsch. Nur ein oder zwei Wörter, aber ich bin nicht fließend. So I'm sorry for being on the Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, you never know. Next time you're over, maybe we'll have learned a bit of English for you. Yeah, oder Deutsch vielleicht. <laughs> ja, das wäre toll. <laughs> Thanks. I can speak English. So can I. <laughs> All right, um, let me stop sharing that one. It's going a bit slowly. All right, of course, um, what I would play it um, in silence and then in the, I would, they wouldn't hear it. And then I'm trying to find my presentation here. All right. Um, just one moment, please. Um, I've lost it. I found it. All right, wrong current slide. So in silent mode, it's not taking me. All right. Uh, they would write all sorts of dialogues um, and they can play and in fact, they can record their sound. And then of course you would play it. Some maybe may not understand the point. That might be uh, something you say, well, it's such a weird, kind of thing that they may not, but of course it's a high, high level thing. It depends on the level of the students. Uh, you might explain, they actually know it, but it's in a, in a weird way. They're pretending not to understand, to annoy her or to, you know, pull a prank on her. But that's, you know, whether they laugh at it or not, it doesn't make any difference. They, it creates, it helps them to create uh, a lot of dialogue. All right. Um, let me move that. There's too many things. Let's go on. Oh, um, I also added these points. Please don't allow the students to, to hear the sound until after they've written their parts. We want them to be creative about the, the whole situation. You can ask them to speak over the video, play it only after the after the fact that you know, after they play and etc. and discuss the funny side because it requires some. And I can move on. Hmm, description. I love this one. We get 
these uh, in the books with the you know description is something description of an object is always a topic uh it, it can have you can have it at low levels like elementary you can have it oh the sky is the limit actually i chose a very simple picture i didn't want to uh pull it off the internet but you can have your your books actually the books are great at these uh you were going to tell imagine we've worked on uh the colors and shapes and and objects and describing things and stuff like that and their feelings towards it how to use it you use it for you use it in order to do this blah blah uh but there's a twist to it i'm not going to ask them to if you're playing a communicative game you can ask them to just choose a, a something there don't tell its name describe it uh we can guess you know we will guess what it is but i wanted to add a twist um is choose an object from a picture um think of a different use for it not the original use but the different use you're free um you're free but you're limited to my limitations there's always rules i i'm a controlling type <laughs> i will control it imagine that you're describing the use use of this object to an alien friend somebody from mars do not mention the name to us or you can create a new name we will try to guess from your description when you're organizing your ideas be careful not to give away the most um the clearest the easy things that will make it easiest to us um and let me try out with you i wrote a sample always you know a, a good it's a good thing way to better yeah, i can't speak um friday evening sometimes it's <laughs> You, you you lose your words anyway um always modeling is the best way to teach how things work so let's say so having said that i'm trying to do my best to hear and if you find a, a loophole in it we can find a solution to it as well so listen to this tell me what i'm talking about this is a little we use it to make noise when we are knocking on a door it makes a nice knock knock sound it's round and this one is yellow there could be other colors there are four hole four holes on it in the center we usually keep it on our key ring what is it you get, ask them to guess and if they can guess that's great shoes <laughs> button it's the button i was trying to get at it so the rule <laughs> not the duck the duck doesn't have holes on it <laughs> the duck <laughs> the shoe all right so you've got to tell them keep the most salient characteristics to the end change the use of it so that you know it's something you're you're describing this to an alien and you're pulling a prank on the alien maybe create a different use of it but the description should be okay um and also go slowly i would say maybe it's yellow and then you're narrowing it down and then it's uh, it's um, kind of round and there are holes in it four holes and that's it everybody's sure what it is so the order of the information is also important and they can get more creative and make it more difficult um uh, as they wish so uh in this one that was my example what we did was they have to see an example to show to to learn how it works and they need to have covered the necessary structures and vocabulary as you can see um there's specific vocabulary specific structures the set of structures they may need some help organizing the information they may need some imaginary uses to the object so first of all as you first start they might you might give them some time to think about it and ask you whether they should say that some of them may not be able to come up with ideas or they will come up with ideas they may be too too um too creative <laughs> so anyway you can help them all right so let's go on to another one poetry Ah, this one's really nice. Now, this is a poem. Four lines, pretty. Um, I don't know. 
uh, what's it called? Pretty um, today's kind of poetry. It's not old or anything by Erin Hansen. And it gives us a feeling. Poetry is there for feelings. So it's best to enjoy it first of all, try to understand it. So let's do that. What if the entire world lived backwards for the day? And maybe then you'd smile at me and tell me you're okay. This is full of feelings. And I can understand that, oh, this person doesn't smile at this person because it says, you know, what if the entire world, this is a, a hypothetical case. So normally this person doesn't smile and tell her that she's or he's okay. Oh, so what you can do, you can change it a little bit. Maybe give, give out different feelings, all right? But we can change the certain words, oops. You can change, for example, but of course, be careful, they and okay are rhyming words. If you want the students to come up with rhyming words, they have to find rhyming words for these two. So they can say for the weeks and then tell me your, hmm. Or, you, you know, they can, they can change a little bit this area backwards, the world, smile, you know, and get them to write, uh, rewrite it all over again. But, you know, and get a different feeling. Although I know that this is a little challenging. They may not rhyme. If, they, if it doesn't rhyme, oh, they can come up with beautiful stuff. This is really pretty um, modern day poetry. So what if the entire class, the entire school, all right, stood upside down for one hour? <laughs> Maybe then the teacher would look at me and then tell me, you're beautiful. Hey, I've written another one. They can come up with very, you know, you can help them and see it's changed. It became something funny. It became some, uh, you know, a student's poetry. This is this one, you know, touch a little bit, but you need to think a lot. It really requires a lot of thinking and helping. What do you think they can come up with different types of poetry? Oh, and then you can ask them to, you know, display these and ask them to, you know, what kind of feeling uh, does it give us? It's a feeling, it's full of feeling. So the students may need to know the sound of the words for rhyming. If you don't require rhyming, that's better. And focus on the feelings. What else? I don't know, just small changes you can ask for. All right. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see another one about feelings. And this is the last one, I promise. Another object one, choose an object, write three, four sentences from the object's point of view. Imagine this object came alive, it, it's alive. What would uh, the object say to itself or to you, um, to the teacher, to the class? Talk about, it should talk about its feelings and thoughts about its job and how it is treated. Ah, oh, all right, so it has to, it, you know, you have to empathize, the student has to empathize with it. All right, so let me read one. Tell me what I'm talking, which thing I'm talking about. Oh, I feel so strong. I can take away all the mistakes. I can take away all the correct sentences too. I am like the undo button. I feel scared though, because I'm getting smaller and smaller every day. Will you throw me away if I get very small? Will you look for me if I fall and roll away? Don't let people step on me, please. Why don't you wear me like a necklace? What am I talking about? I'm talking about the eraser. So in each sentence, I wonder if I put, yeah, I put it here. Um, they can read, they can exchange, but you know, I never told what I was, you know, um, I was trying to describe the, the rubber or eraser. Um, 
And, you know, it's I'm talking about how it is used, what happens to it, and how it feels uh, towards its maybe owner, <laughs> and what it wishes to be, you know, uh, not to happen <laughs> to himself or herself. So to itself, let me say, my English is not very good, but my teaching is good, believe me. <laughs> anyway, so this is um, an interesting one. This is, it, it, it gets them to, it can get them to practice a lot of the structures, you know. Um, they can say many, many things, you know, it, it, their fe the feelings and the, how it's being treated. The, even the eraser is worried and it has some ideas, you know, <laughs> to be saved, salvaged. Interesting. So it gives some idea about the empathy. And uh, if the student, imagine a student writes this, that we can, you can see that the student has observed others, what happens to erasers really, and how um, valuable the eraser is. Etc. You can ask the student to write a response to this, whatever. You can go uh, different ways. All right. So what should be okay for you? Be ready to exemplify it. Give an example. Model it. Um, at the right level, you know what you have just practiced with your students. This is, um, I'm assuming, there are lots of assumptions when you look at it. I'm assuming a lot of things. You know, feel plus adjective, can. I don't know, because there's the will, uh, oh, not for, it's kind of pre-intermediate, intermediate. They can come up with better ones if they like the activity. All right, I come up to these differences. Let me stop here. Um, you can generate many different activities, I mean, um, or tasks. Creative activities are just, you can be as creative and also, um, you can find these types of activities in, in many journals, like ELT Journal um, and ELT Forum is one. There's always something there. There's a story, how to use a story. ELT Forum is free. And if you say just English Language Teaching Forum, you can find it. Also, let's keep a secret. Uh, let me share with you a secret, not keep a secret, uh, share it with others. We have uh, different activities, uh, creative ones, on Inged members area. Um, but if you don't want to see it, that's fine. But you can, uh, if you're, it's only open for uh, Inged members though. And um, we're constantly, it's class activities. You can see certain groups of these here. Uh, let me share with you uh, how, what it looks like and we'll, um, here it says, we well, are on Inged website, class activities. To be able to access this section, you must be an Inged member. I haven't logged in, that's why it won't, it's not gonna allow me to see it, it, it looks dead. But um, if you're a member, these are alive, you know, and you can click and have a look. It tells you how to use, it's, it's, it's a good area. And we're adding to them, aren't we, Hojam? I'm going to add these ones there too as with the full examples. So if you want, you can have them there. But you need to become a member. That's the one. There are strings attached. <laughs> a little bit. Anyway, so the chat boxes, the box was burning with lots of ideas and fun. You, I can't be out of fun. Please include me. Any questions? Thank or you, Def Nohacham, uh, for capturing us so well and sharing your expertise. It, it was uh, an enlightening and informative speech, but at the same time, we had great fun because uh, the activities are so engaging and motivating. And of course, because we have a naughty student among us and he kept bugging us during this session. I don't know what we are going to do about him. I mean, he's, I'm not going to mention his name, but you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I know, but that's realistic, isn't it? You get to have, it these, is. have some fun stuff there. It's going to get even funner. So <laughs> you, need to, um, you need to be prepared for those students. <laughs> and increase, yes. You know, yeah. Some extra uh, material, maybe. Um, yeah. extra, 
um, I don't know, responsibility, um, things like that, so that they are busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in fact, uh, a little bit uh, like after you talked about the second activity, I believe, this uh, dialogue thing. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the sound of video activity. Tony Hojam uh, asked a question, raised a question here. It's in the chat box. But... Uh, Tony Ojam, if you'd like to ask that question, go ahead, shoot, or I can read it. So you decide. Or Devno Ojam, you can also see that. Okay, okay. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, it's just my, my hair and makeup is terrible today. So <laughs> I show my face, yeah? Especially when I have a natural beauty queen like Defne in front of me. I'm I'm just totally shamed. Huh? <laughs> anyway, look, my my question was, and and Aidan and I have been chatting about this a lot with the um the rise of 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 what people are calling trans languaging, which I think is a totally fake methodology. <laughs> but it does raise an issue. I mean, I I loved a lot of the activities, and like even with me, you know, it it just create so much curiosity in my head. One of the things I find myself, as, especially if I was not bilingual or multilingual, I, I put myself in the head of a, a young student who doesn't speak a lot of English, but they've still got that energy to contribute and be creative. Um, what, what, they, what they will do is they say, oh, Hojam, Hojam, I, I want to say this. What is this word in English? Can you tell me? Can you help with the pronunciation? And then, then if you do that, you often create a situation where the other kids hear, oh, it's okay to ask for a translation. And mm -hmm. essentially what, what we're doing is we're focusing there on, on what we call emergent language. Yeah, and lots of people see this as a valid form of learning, particularly um, a very useful form of learning, because if students are creating the language that they want to learn, they tend to learn it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my question to you, sorry, it, it's got a big front end, but my question to you is, with these kind of creative writing activities, when they produce that curiosity, what is your strategy for dealing with those kind of questions proactively, not just dealing with it on a reactive basis? Yeah, so you're, you're not just translating, you, you have a strategy for capturing um, those kind of questions from students and getting them to integrate that work in, into their creative writing? Do, do you have a, a, a proactive strategy that you can share with us? Um, I don't know if it's proactive enough, but I can say I'm, I try to control things. You might have noticed I'm a controlling <laughs> kind of person. <laughs> yeah, mo most of us are perfectionist control freaks. We know. <laughs> So we are teachers. Classroom management and lesson planning, I think I overlearned it. So, you know, uh, what I would do is uh, damage control. Hmm. So, so I would try to say, I would tr usually when, when, when we're doing some writing or dialogue writing or whatever, they want to write things that they don't know about. They want to express their ideas in Turkish directly in English within that task. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize the task is not exactly is not supposed to cover everything they want to say in Turkish, but it's supposed to get them to practice the things we just, we just presented mm -hmm. them with. So um, that with that kind of freedom, they want to be totally free. And uh, sometimes they, uh, you might end up with having dialogues with, uh, d that has nothing to do with what, what you've practiced. So it's good mm. fun, but it's, you're not, they're not practicing it. So what I would do, I would say, I always say, please try to use these tasks, uh, these mm -hmm. um, the things on the board or in the, the things on the on the page, this and that and the other, 
And you can use three words from new words that you don't know about, mm. but you know the Turkish and nothing more than that. Two or three, it depends on what kind of, what group I have, or it depends on the task, but no more than that. And I criticize their materials too sometimes if it has nothing to do with, with what we've just practiced or, you know, if it's totally off. I say, well, it's fun, but you haven't practiced much. So that's why I create that kind of limit. Um, kind of, I am a limiting person. I just realized by the end of this session, what do you realize? I, I, I limit things. Um, I draw the lines. You know, you can go, you can be free up to a point, but there you stop. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of, I don't know if you think it's proactive, it's positive. Uh, it's just damage control for me. <laughs> No, no, I, 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 I can see your, your point. I mean, the, the, the important thing is, is it's good to be proactive in your strategies, because if you're only reacting, you can be making uh, some, some mistakes that perhaps don't map on to, as you've said, the, the purpose of your lesson. Yeah? Absolutely. Um, sure. But um, uh, I mean, my, my own view there is I, I agree with you. There's a, there's a purpose to the lesson and that's what you're doing. But I think from a motivational point of view for, for students, we need to give them a bit of time, um, you know, a bit of space to use those opportunities for emergent language because then they've got ownership of them. Um, but we, we, we limit it. We say, look, we're not going to turn this class into a translation class. You know, go. I'm going to help you learn um, the language items that you want. And then together, we'll look at how we could build good sentences around that key language. Because yeah. then they, they, they feel as if the curriculum is a bit negotiated, e even with kids. You know, it's a, it's a good motivator. Yeah. Uh, Devna Hocam, since you are the instructor in that classroom, after a while your students will be uh, familiar with your strategies. So if, for example, as a teacher, I say, don't ask me, I'm not going to translate anything for you, deal with it by yourselves. You can get help from your friends, but I'm not going to do anything for you. So if they know this beforehand, maybe rather than thinking in Turkish and trying to come up with some fancy lines in Turkish and then trying to translate it into English, they may push themselves to, you know, express whatever they want to say in English within their limited language capacity and th that that's what right what we are trying to do in fact I, am i not correct here yeah and also these days we need to uh, well in my case let me start from there they use their phones immediately so there's yeah. no, usually some kind of an understanding uh between mm -hmm. them and usually we include something related to the use of the diction online dictionaries before mm -hmm. we start that particular activity. I say mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. phones are off, or you can use you can check this many of the words because you know we're hearing too many new words. We're missing the point here, mm -hmm. um, and of course these days we need to add more to the instructions. I, what I keep telling is it's it's become a weird weird world now. No politics, no sad uh, issues, no chat GPT, mm -hmm. no this, no that. You know, it's I'm, I'm a control what freak. What kind really. of a creative writing are we talking um, about? Um, I, of course, everything class, is forbidden. Everything is forbidden. It's, yeah, I know. But you know, I but know. You can't, Be Yes, you know, because you teach at a university and it's a, a state university, oh, yeah, and you need to be careful. Even with students at elementary school or my son's 12, if you let him be, oh, my God, you can't have the lesson. Um, it's, oh, God. And they will put all sorts of words in it. They, they, he says, guys, he says, 
all sorts of S word and mm -hmm. all sorts of letters of words, you know, words with yeah. letters. Uh, there's no end to it, um, you know, mm -hmm. in, they check the words, they find the wrong ones. Oh, so um, it, it, there must be some kind of limitation. You, mm -hmm. The area where you let them free is their imagination and how mm -hmm. they can use the language that they've learned. Um, you're not putting them into the sentence that somebody else has written. And they're just putting the verbs into verb type, you know, verb two. Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty free, actually. Um, but of course, you need to have some structure in order to have the lesson. How are you going mm -hmm. to give feedback any other way? You know, if you don't mm -hmm. focus, mm -hmm. it will be all over the place. It's really, mm -hmm. especially in these kind of free writing, you know, creative writing kind of lessons. It's um, by nature, it's harder. You know, you, it's, it'll be really hard. So I would, I would have the structure. How do you feel about peer feedback? Before you, you have give to, feedback. You have to control have to, it. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, what a controlling teacher we have here. <laughs> no, but did you? Or, anyway, so you need to focus. So if you're doing um, like poetry, the feedback is, you know, you ask the students to listen to each other and tell them what feeling you get out of it. You write poetry for feeling. First of all, if I can get the feeling, if, the, uh, if they've changed it um, well enough, I should be able to understand it and react to it in the right way. So content, mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. content. The dialogues, I mean, you, you get them to read it maybe in front with, uh, do the voiceover mm -hmm. and, Students comment on it, whether the, the mimicry matches the, the sentences, and then you focus on other stuff, you know, the grammar and the, um, and the vocabulary use later on. Yeah, okay. Uh, my dear colleagues, do you have any other questions or comments that you would like to uh, share with us? By the way, in the chat box, I know Jam says, no politics, really? Is that even possible? And Tony says, everything is politics. True. That is true. Correct. Everything is politics. But as you know, as uh, an instructor at a state university, you're not allowed to talk about politics in the classroom. That is totally against the regulations. That is the kind of politics that Defno Hojam is referring to. Of course, everything is politics, of course. Even sure. our talk about buying a car here in the chat box, that is politics. Right. Uh, uh, and another uh, warning that I would like to uh, come up with is the uh, dialectal differences. And since we are not native speakers of this language, it is so hard to follow these cuss words, the taboo words that uh, we should be careful about. Uh, for example, I have learned from a stand-up comedian that the C word was a totally taboo word in American English, but it was very commonly used in British English. So when this British stand-up comedian had a show uh, in L.A., uh, everyone was so shocked because uh, he kept using, yeah, it is the C-U-N-T word, Tony. My God, Tony, you don't know any cuss words? What is the problem? I, I am so innocent. <laughs> like the driven snow. I am an innocent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to play the violin as the background music? <laughs> Uh, and of course, there are some uh, racial uh, issues that, as a culture, we are not aware of, because we have never had that kind of racial issues. We have other kind of racial issues here. Uh, so, 
it, it is very problematic and definitely it is a, a good example of showing how language and culture go so uh, they are so interwoven it is almost impossible to deal with them separately but as teachers of a foreign language i believe it's our responsibility to try to keep up with them i don't know how we do that <laughs> well of course i have an idea but i don't know how you can do it i don't good luck in Manchester, my dad used to call me uh, <laughs> at least twice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, those who attended Inget uh, conference some years ago, a full professor used the N word as a part of a panel discussion. All the audience was shocked. And then I was the moderator and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and one of the part, you know, audience member of the audience raised his hand and said, well, this is not a, you know, appropriate behavior. Why did you use that word, N word? And he wasn't even aware of the fact that that N word is a, taboo word the speaker i mean so i i i just jumped uh onto the situation and i said well see hopefully we didn't have any uh black americans or black people among the audience but of course that is very very offensive i said uh well of course, it is our responsibility to try to follow up all these cultural issues, but we never had that issue in our country. So we don't know that that N word is an offensive word. I was playing the dumb, of course. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, yeah. Uh, yes, but the issue is, uh, Tony, if you belong to that society, you can use it. But if you don't belong to that society, that group, you can't. It is offensive. I was just writing that, Hojan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, all, that's all, what I that's so, what I saw, and that's why um <clears throat> uh I wanted to warn because we do the same in Turkey, in Turkey. I'm gonna get used to this. <laughs> if I belong to a, a subgroup, I can make fun of that subgroup. But any any outsider is totally forbidden to say anything about my subgroup. I'll just <laughs> punch in the face. Well, um, yes, I know, I know. Well, um, I think after the session, we have found out that no matter uh, what the age, what the level, language level I'm referring to of the students uh, are, we can always find a fun writing activity. It doesn't have to be a long one. It can be a short one, but it will be motivating if they can start writing one word and then maybe a phrase, and then maybe a close, and then maybe full sentence. Ooh, then comes the paragraph. You never know. But uh, the ideas, as uh, Devna Hojam has mentioned, you can find them everywhere. You can create your own activities. We have collected some activities in this session. I have taken all my notes, so you can adapt them, you can play with them, 
and you know change it according to you know, the uh, interests of your groups so i i do thank you definitely jam for uh reminding us that there's no need to find excuses not to do something there is always a way if there's a will oh yes absolutely yeah. So yeah. thank you, thank you uh, very thank much. You yes, and uh, having you is always a pleasure. I'm looking forward to your next talk <laughs> already. Oh, yeah. My dear, yeah, my dear colleagues, of course. Thank you very much for being with us, sharing this wonderful session. And I hope to see you next Friday with another wonderful speaker. Take good care of yourselves. Be safe. Stay healthy. Try to get wealthy, please. <laughs> and continue supporting Inget. Bye-bye, everyone. Good night. Good night.